every type of mutant and cannibal found in the forest and sons of the forest. The forest is a game that commands respect in the survival horror genre. The protagonist finds himself in the middle of an isolated island after a plane crash and he must look for his missing son, exploring the length, breadth and underside of the island. To make matters worse, the island is inhabited by some terrifying enemies, from deadly cannibals to grotesquely twisted mutants. With the recent release of the sequel titled Sons of the Forest, some more of these demented creatures have joined the list. And in this video, we will explore every single mutant type found in both these games. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the mutants and cannibals seen in the forest. There are few things more challenging in the gameplay than the hordes of mutants that keep coming at you. Not much is revealed about their origins except for the fact that they've been inhabiting the islands for a very long time. They existed before the Christian missionaries who were among the first known settlers on the island. You will see these mutants walking around without any clothes and they even lack the basic sensory feelings. From what can be observed, they lack any specific reproductive organ as well, except for Virginia. And these creatures also lack the finesse and intelligence to develop or use tools and weapons. The mutants probably have ties to the Ancient Ones, who have been presented as supernatural beings inhabiting the islands. While there is no sign of them anymore, there are a few magical artifacts still present on the island that point to their existence. Some theories suggest that they are actually descendants and followers of the Ancient Ones. However, there has been no proper clarification regarding the same in the forests. Some of the mutants could also be a result of the failed experiments conducted by the Sahara Corporation using some of the magical artifacts. Irrespective of their origins, the mutants are all extremely dangerous and here is a list of every mutant that you will encounter in the game. Virginia like some of the other mutants seen in the game, there are enough indications to suggest that Virginia might have been created by Sahara, a therapeutics company that researched on everlasting youth and longevity. She was probably created by using the Resurrection Obelisk, an ancient artifact in the research lab that could resurrect the dead in return for a live sacrifice. The orientation slideshow that can also be found in the Sahara Research Laboratory indicates that Virginia was 12 when she underwent the mutations. These mutations caused terrible mutilations in her body and also caused her to develop multiple sex organs. Some theories suggest that Virginia was capable of spawning the mutant babies, which we will discuss shortly. The basic structure of Virginia is a combination of two or three bodies that seem to be struggling against each other at all times. She doesn't have any facial features and while moving around, this mutant makes a creepy skittering sound that can be heard from a distance. She has six legs, clawed feet and six arms that are split in half. She is the only mutant to have a visible genitalia and her physiology also includes breasts. These mutants are not the toughest to deal with and weapons such as molotovs, flare guns and fire arrows can prove to be quite effective. Virginia fights better on open grounds where its maneuverability is not limited but in enclosed arenas the player has a clear edge. These mutants are almost always accompanied by mutant babies and cannibals and it might be a wise move to deal with the side threats first before taking her on. While the most commonly spotted Virginia is the pale-skinned one, there is a blue-skinned variant seen in the later stages of the game that is considerably deadlier. These are faster, stronger and require extra caution to be dealt with. Cowman While exploring the cave systems of the peninsula, you will encounter these ferocious mutants. They also seem to have similar origins as some of the other mutants like Virginia and probably originated from the Resurrection Obelisk. Although the physical structure of a cowman has enough distortions, it is quite evident that these mutants are not formed of multiple bodies like the Virginia. Also, unlike the Virginia, cowman has distinct facial features. They look like a morbidly obese human or a deformed human fetus. 
and these mutants can grow to be significantly taller and stronger than the others. The cowman has tiny arms which are oddly disproportionate to its body and the massive protruding stomach is an easily noticeable physical feature in these abominations. Appearances can be deceptive and unlike what you would think going by its looks, the cowman can be ridiculously fast. Their attacks are lethal and these mutants are known to jump into the air and body slam the player. While the maneuvers can be tricky to outdo, a great tactic can be to run around in circles while it chases you. The cowman is more and more visible as you proceed in the gameplay. They are even deadlier in enclosed spaces such as the caves and it might be a good idea to lure them out into an open area. One theory suggests that the cowman is just a fully matured version of the mutant baby because the similarities are quite obvious, but there is no confirmation regarding the same in the game. Mutant Baby As we discussed earlier, the origins of the mutant baby might be closely related to the Virginia. The multiple sex organs of the latter might be capable of producing the large number of mutant babies and these mutants are usually seen alongside a Virginia. The newborn incubators in the Sahara Research Laboratory also have a few specimens in the incubators and the indications suggest that the company was experimenting on these creatures. The mutant babies have one leg and a stump in place of the other. Even its arms are disfigured with one normal arm and another being a smaller, clawed version. These mutants drag themselves across the floor and make a squelching sound as they do so. It is a good way to hear them before you first see them and they make angry screeching sounds as well. When the mutant babies are killed, they give out an unnerving human-like crying sound and these mutants are probably one of the most underrated enemies that you face in the forest. Their mode of attack is also quite unique where they fling themselves towards the player causing severe damage. Luckily, they are quite easy to kill and usually a single good hit does the trick. That being said, the mutant babies always appear in large groups and the collective effort can be pretty hard to put down. Armsy As you can imagine from the name, this mutant is called Armsy because of its multiple arms. This is yet another twisted creation by the Sahara Corporation where they tested a small boy with the resurrection obelisk. It caused the boy to become severely disfigured and highly aggressive. At the time of this mutation, he was only 6 years old and from the looks of it, there is a good chance that Armsy is actually more than one child fused together. During the research phase of the company, one of these mutants broke free and killed all the scientists. The Armsy is one of the taller mutants and these creatures can be freakishly strong. Although it doesn't have any facial features, the frontal part of its head has a slit and it seems like the slit opens when it tries to see things. The basic body structure seems to be made up of three bodies and the Armsy has six arms and deformed legs. Its feet are pointed backwards and the mutant even has a tentacle-like limb which could well be the umbilical cord. While their modes of attack can be extremely dangerous, there is a chance you will encounter an Armsy that doesn't show any aggression. However, the peaceful coexistence will change very quickly if the mutant is provoked. It is best to use stealth and get away from the armsy mutants and if faced with inevitable combat, fire weapons or poison arrows can prove to be very effective. There is also a rarer blue version of armsy that is even more difficult to destroy. Worm The worm mutant is also called John because later in the game while exploring the medical hallways and the artifact room, one can find the worm's bed with the name John written over it. The exact significance of a person named John and this mutant is not established, but it is possible that like many of the other mutants, the worm was also a result of some twisted experiments. These mutants look like multiple slug-like entities fused together with a common hive mind. This amazing hive mind is extremely powerful and capable of unleashing some lethal attacks even though the individual small creatures are relatively powerless. When one of the boss monsters is defeated, it can spawn a single worm mutant. If the singular threat is not dealt with quickly, it can multiply very fast and become dangerous. These mutants are only taken seriously once they quickly form up to form a gigantic, towering structure that almost seems gravity-defying. This giant beast can land a powerful blow with its massive form and close range weapons are not ideal while fighting the worm. Girl. 
The Forest provides two alternate endings once you have finished playing the entire story. One of these endings involves you destroying the powerful obelisk and you will encounter the girl mutant if you choose this path. You will find this mutant above the ground and it has several appendages where a single worm acts as its host. Although there are clear similarities with the final boss mutant in the game, the differences are quite noticeable. For starters, the girl mutant is nowhere as powerful and it doesn't take too much effort to finish her off. Once the mutant is killed, the host worm should also be destroyed because it clones itself very quickly and takes on a deadly form. Be aware of the multiple forms of attack that can come from the girl mutant and the flare gun can prove to be quite efficient in killing it. Megan Cross, the final boss mutant. Megan Cross was the daughter of Matthew Cross, who was one of the scientists working with Sahara. She grew up with divorced parents and her mother got a restraining order against Matthew. Megan was suffering from some illness and Matthew was obsessed with resurrecting her using the obelisk. The game starts off with Eric witnessing a plane crash and when he wakes up, he helplessly watches his son Timmy being kidnapped. In the end, Eric finds out that Matthew had gotten Timmy kidnapped because he wanted to use the little boy as the sacrifice that would resurrect Megan. The ploy worked, but from the looks of it, she killed her father after being resurrected. Eric also discovered Covers that his son Timmy has been killed and now even he wants to use the obelisk to bring him back. This is when he encounters the final boss mutant, Megan Cross, in her transformed avatar. It is a crazy transformation process where foot-like appendages emerge from her throat and she looks like a deadlier version of Virginia. When Eric manages to kill the mutant, the appendages and limbs fall off and he tries to use the body to resurrect Timmy. This is where he learns the hard truth. Only a life sacrifice can bring back the individual from the dead using the obelisk. Megan, as the final boss mutant, might be quite intimidating, but her underlying backstory is quite a tragic one. The various types of cannibals encountered in The Forest. It's not just these deadly mutants that you have to worry about, because there are also these terrifying cannibals that are after you throughout the gameplay. Let us take a look at the different types of cannibals that you come across in The Forest. They are essentially humans in monstrous forms, and even they haven't been given a proper backstory. Many of the gamers are of the opinion that the cannibals were once a regular human tribe before they fell victim to the dark forces and transformed into vicious, flesh-eating creatures. Here are the various cannibal types that you need to watch out for. Regular Cannibal the regular cannibals that you encounter in the peninsula seem to be more organized and more intelligent than the mutants. However, they aren't necessarily more powerful. These cannibals can usually be seen in groups of two to four, and they are usually accompanied by a leader. The male individuals are bald and sport some kind of white war paint. They also wear various ornaments such as necklaces made of makeshift lamps and CDs. These cannibals also carry some form of primitive weapons and all of them seem to be left-handed. The female cannibals do not wear any war paint and neither can they be seen wielding weapons. They are usually dressed in skirts, although some might just abandon clothing altogether. Some of the females have hair, while others are bald, and even though they do not carry any weapons, they still participate in attacking the player. The leaders are the deadliest, and they wear decorated skulls and chopped off arms and limbs on their back. All the regular cannibals seem to know the island like the back of their hands. They are quite resourceful and make use of the available tools and animals on the island. These cannibals are initially neutral to the player, but depending on your actions, they can be provoked to attack. Their patrols seem to be organized and although they emit sounds, they often rely on stealth for better attacks. Skinny or Starving Cannibal since there is not much physical difference between the regular and the skinny and starving cannibals, it is quite valid to wonder what caused them to separate from the main clan. It is a possibility that these cannibals were the weaker individuals, or some of their actions got them exiled. True to their name, the starving cannibals are permanently hungry, and they can often be seen eating from dead corpses of other cannibals or animals. These cannibals also patrol in groups, like the regular cannibals, but their patrols are not as well coordinated. They are a part of the skinny cannibals and are significantly more aggressive. They attack the player with the slightest or no provocation, and the skinny, dainty mutants can be deceptively strong. 
They appear to be covered in dirt and blood and they move around without any clothes, walking on all fours. These cannibals are extremely fast and use sticks as weapons. Some of them can be seen without weapons as well. While the regular cannibals are capable of unleashing stealthy attacks, the starving cannibals fail to do so. They can easily be distinguished by their maniacal laughter. Since they are known to turn on their own kind, it can be used to manipulate their attacks on other cannibals for the player's advantage. Pale Cannibals and Pale Skinny Cannibals The pale cannibals are uncannily humanoid in their mannerisms and they stand quite tall. These can be found in the caves along with the pale skinny cannibals and they are slightly larger than the regular cannibals. Their sounds of pain and screaming can be quite eerie and all members of the pale cannibals seem to be males. They sleep like bats attached to the ceilings of the caves and their animalistic nature is a bit more prominent than the regular cannibals. While the other cannibal variants start off as neutral towards the player, the pale cannibals are hostile from the very beginning. The skinny pale cannibals are part of the usual skinny cannibals but differ slightly in their appearance. These cannibals are usually seen standing hunched over and they move around in a far more primitive manner. Like the pale cannibals, their skinny counterparts also reside in the caves and have the same complexion. There seems to be no female version of the pale skinny cannibals. Fire Cannibal As a part of the forest gameplay, you are often required to set up a base and the fire cannibals are sometimes sent to attack these bases. They also take up patrol duties and these cannibals can be distinguished from the others because of the fire torch that they carry around. Tennis balls hang from their belt and they light them on fire and throw them at the player from a distance. The fire cannibal can also attack using the fire torch if it encounters the player in close quarters. Luckily, they don't really aim perfectly and the attacks can be orchestrated to hurt other cannibals in the region if the player moves around smartly. These cannibals must be finished off quickly before they can cause damage to the bases and melee weapons and fire arrows can be quite effective against them. Dynamite Cannibal these cannibals seem to be a deadlier version of the fire cannibal and they can throw a dynamite stick at the player. They are orange in color and also carry a flaming torch like the fire cannibals. Besides their unique color, they are easy to identify because of their jewelry, war paint and attire. Just like the attacks of the fire cannibal can be manipulated against other cannibals, it can be done for dynamite cannibals as well. Masked Cannibals and Masked Skinny Cannibals Personally, we find them to be the creepiest among all the cannibal variants, simply because of their appearance. While they are very similar to the pale cannibals, they can easily be identified from the neck up, where they have stitched the faces of the plane passengers like a mask. They behave very similar to the regular cannibals and they are usually seen walking around on two legs, unlike the skinny cannibals who walk on all fours. Although they can sometimes be seen fighting among themselves, there is a sense of brotherhood that can be observed from the way they save their injured or dead comrades. The skinny masked cannibals differ from the masked cannibals in size as they are a lot smaller. Among the three skinny cannibal types, they are the strongest and they always walk around with masked cannibals even though they display very different behavior. Their fast movements make them deadly attackers and an entity to watch out for on the perilous island. Painted Cannibal The painted cannibals come in both genders and they can be identified by the multiple black crosses all over their bodies. The significance of the cross is a mystery and it could have been an impact of the missionaries or Dr. Cross. They are stronger and faster than the regular cannibals and are often seen accompanying the fire cannibals. They do not have a skinny variant and the hierarchy structure among them seems familiar to the regular cannibals. Their leaders have a large red cross on their chests and they can be seen carrying a skull as a trophy. What is the difference between the mutants and the cannibals of the island? Besides their basic difference in terms of appearances, there are a few other factors that separate a mutant from a cannibal. The mutants are way more aggressive in comparison and they can attack even without being provoked. In a way, they are far more vicious than the cannibals who can at least control some of their primal urges. These mutants are just killing machines and they can also devour their prey. You will find a hierarchy in the cannibal society but the mutants lack any such distinct social structure. Their insatiable hunger forces them to look out for prey at all times and while they don't attack their own, they can be seen attacking the cannibals. What are the new mutants in Sons of the Forest? The fans have been eagerly waiting for the release of a follow-up to The Forest and the long wait is finally over. 
Sons of the Forest is every bit as terrifying as the original, and besides the familiar mutant faces from the first game, such as the mutant babies, there have been a few additions to the list as well. While the basic nature of the mutants remains the same, some of the new mutants are actually friendly. However, you must watch out and be wary of trusting them blindly. Before you explore the extensive map of Sons of the Forest, let us quickly familiarize you with the new threats that are going to welcome you. Fingers. These are one of the first mutants you will encounter, and this new mutant is basically a mutated version of the hand that you saw in Wednesday. They have a human form from the waist down, but their defining feature is the massive maw that goes down the length of their head, neck and upper body. No face, no chest, but multiple fingers wiggling around. The opening has multiple fingers which can be used to grab their victims. They will give you some trouble on open grounds, but nothing that a few days of practice cannot deal with. Giant The Giant will probably be one of the most unique mutants that one will encounter in the new game. From the looks of it, the Giant is truly gigantic and bigger than any other mutant that you have seen before. Taking it down might require some special skills and even the pro gamers familiar with the previous game might need some new tactics for this one. The Twins These are super fast, agile and to make matters worse, they have an appearance of something that you see in your worst nightmare. The Twins are conjoined bodies that are fused together at the waist. Their movement is side by side and they move on all their arms and limbs. The limbs are equipped with sharp claws that can cause some serious damage and these mutants can be seen crawling along the cave walls and ceilings. Watch out for their surprise attacks because these creatures can be quite tactical. John 2.0 Remember the word mutant from the original game? This is a refurbished version of that mutant, probably created to bring back fond memories of one of the scariest encounters in the previous game. Just like the worm, John 2.0 is formed by two conjoined bodies stitched at their legs. They almost look like two cannibals were joined at the legs and walking on their hands to give them a worm-like figure. They use one hand to move around, while the other hand is used to attack the player. Sluggy. The best way to define Sluggy is probably going to sound just as outrageous as the mutant actually is. It is basically a massive pile of flesh and bones with multiple body parts randomly joined together to form a gigantic stature. It not only blocks your path but also distracts you by throwing babies at you as a defense. This vicious monster appears towards the end of gameplay, so hopefully you will have learned enough skills by then to deter this colossal threat. The new version of Virginia. There is another updated version of a familiar face from The Forest. This time around, Virginia has more of a human touch to her appearance, even though she has three arms and legs. At least her face is like a normal woman this time, and you can even interact with the new Virginia as you want. She is an NPC, and whether you choose to befriend her or shoo her away is up to you. Marvelous Verdict Dare to venture into the forest yet again. Sons of the Forest has been greeted by an overwhelming response, with over 2 million copies sold within the first 24 hours. If you haven't gotten your hands on the game yet, and you happen to be a fan of the survival horror genre, we strongly recommend trying it out. The sickening mutants, the overall ambience, and the constant threat as you walk around the island will produce enough adrenaline to help you through the weekday blues. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the deadly mutants in the franchise. Also, tell us about your thoughts on the new game and the mutants that intimidate you the most. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.